Ivanka Trump taking the stand in her father's New York fraud trial. The former first daughter spending five hours answering a multitude of questions about her father's finances and the family business. The former president's attorney, Alina Haba, joins us now. Alina, thank you so much for waking up early after your very busy day <laughs> yesterday and all throughout the week. So uh, we don't see Ivanka Trump a lot anymore. She's much more of a private person, mm -hmm. and she was called in to testify yesterday. Uh, what was that like? Tell us what happened. I think let's start from before she came in to testify. I think there was some frustration there because she's been dismissed from this action. Um, and many people don't realize that because the judge proceeds as if she hasn't, as if there is no statute of limitations, as if a lot of things that were decided by the appellate division. Um, and he just disregards it. So she came in, though. She was great. She um, really was epic on the stand, just stoic, answered the questions directly, was very factual. The facts are good for us. So there, it was an uneventful day. I think that's why it was pretty quiet in the press. There was there were no fireworks. Interesting, interesting. Look, the AG rested their case. You're now moving for something called a directed verdict. Yeah. That's lawyers speak for throw this thing out <laughs> because the AG did not prove her case. What are your arguments? That's right. Uh, well, I got to save them for a couple hours from sure. now, and I would tell you to pay attention. Um, but most importantly, every case has certain elements that you have to prove. One of the biggest elements is intent to defraud. In this one, you have to show intent. You have to show reliance. We're talking about sophisticated banks. We're talking about Deutsche Bank, who, if I give you a number and say, I believe Mar-a-Lago is worth a number, they're going to take that number and they're going to say, let me have my people do their vetting. This is DB. They've got some big lawyers, some big firms, smart people working for them. They do their own vetting and they say, okay, we want a personal guarantee because you have a lot of cash and the Trumps have a lot of cash. Let's take that and then we're good with it. Here's the deal. They're putting their nose into private businesses' contracts. Imagine a world where now, okay, you guys have a contract. I'm going to put my nose into it and use a consumer fraud statute to do so. Right. That's what we're dealing with. So they failed to meet their case primarily because the only person that had any testimony, not surprisingly, about the president was Michael Cohen. Sure. And he folded on the stand when I cross-examined him. He lied under oath. And as I said yesterday, he really should be prosecuted for what happened in that courtroom with me. Yeah, and um, after the former president testified, Letitia James came out of the courtroom and said, justice will be served. And mm. the question does still remain justice against two. I believe even the judge said that there is really no victim in this crime. There alleged is Alleged no. crime. Right. And it's not a crime. It's a civil suit right. for damages. She's using this. Now, don't forget, they tried to bring a criminal action and the DA backed off and said, no, there's not enough there there. Mm -hmm. So Letitia, look, she's, in my opinion, she's a very desperate human being who sits in the courtroom. I've watched her. She does not participate. She doesn't sit at counsel table. She doesn't practice. She just sits there taking notes on what she's going to say outside, but she says the same thing in their blanket statements because she doesn't have real facts. He lied and no one is above the law. Well, guess what, Michael Cohen? You're not above the law. Letitia James, you're not above yeah. the law. You wasted taxpayer dollars and the world is not being fooled. One thing that I don't think is being talked about enough, especially when you listen to the other people on the other networks, your team and the president looks to me like they're baiting both the AG and this judge to say really stupid, stupid things that on appeal, if you end up losing, are going to get this case reversed. Is that the strategy? I can't answer that yeah, question. Sure. I will say I'm Tom smiling here. I will try. Yeah. Listen, I don't think you have to bait these people. Right. I just don't think they're making intellectually uh, wise decisions. And there's a record, and the record already speaks for itself. All right, really quickly before we move on, because we want to talk to you about something else, but uh, what's going to happen in court today, and when does this all wrap up? Today is a really important day. We're going to move for a directed verdict, saying that they have rested yesterday. You didn't prove the elements of the case. Mm -hmm. Certain, uh, this case should be dismissed. It should never have been brought. Uh, now, with this judge, do I think he's going to give us an ear? No, but we have to make a record again. So we're going to do so, and and we'll see what happens. After that, we'll start our case in chief on Monday and bring up our first witness. There you go. All you right. saw, I think you saw. She's a pretty good lawyer. She didn't take any of my typical cross-examination <laughs> questions. She's on her game. So I'm going to let you play lawyer on a different case, if okay. you will. Sure. Hunter Biden, brother Ooh. of uh, Joe Biden, Jim Biden, all getting subpoenas. Yeah. If you have Hunter Biden in a deposition, you are deposing Hunter Biden under oath. Yeah. What are you asking him? About the money. 
follow the money. You always have to follow the money. Money doesn't lie. He lies, but money doesn't lie. And they have a paper trail now. You've seen Marjorie Taylor Greene, some of these people putting up pictures. And, and there was a beautiful chart that somebody on Fox had put up saying the money went from here to here to here to here to here. Sheltering, exactly, there it is. The companies and, and moving the money, it doesn't matter. Money doesn't lie. Did you receive the money? Yes. Then there's images. Unfortunately, he has a big trail of images. There's certain personal issues that he has going on. Minors, drugs, trafficking, things like that that we've seen come up. I'm waiting to see when they start treating them like they treat us. No one is above the law will show me that no one is above the law. There is no way that the crime, the Biden crime family has not received money from the CCP. We know it. It's a fact. That's a prosecution. That's something we need to go after. So I'm going to ask him about the money. I'm going to ask him what he knew about the money, about his sister-in-law, and about all those things that we now know. And then I would probably show him pictures, because pictures don't lie. Well, lawmakers may be able to do just that. We do have pictures of the checks, and uh, there's been a lot of investigation. Uh, the only thing missing is linking Joe Biden to any sort of influence peddling. But uh, those things could come out in the future. We'll just have to wait and see. Thoughts on coming here every day before you go to court, because this was amazing. It would be come on up. Pleasure. Come on by. If I get hair Makeup, sure. you got it. Uh, <laughs> Alina Haba, we can't thank you enough in light of the fact us. that you're in trial. Thank we appreciate you. it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.